Daily Tech News Show is made possible by you, the listener. Thanks to all of you, including Reed Fishler, Larry Bailey, Michelle Sergio, and a brand new patron, Sherry. Hey, Sherry. Long time listener, Sherry. Good to have you. On this episode of DTNS, we debunk a report that it'll cost you $1,700 to watch the NFL this season, but we do think TV has gotten too complicated. Plus, fun form factors from IFA, and Patrick Norton explains the Sonos mess, and if there are any alternatives. This is the Daily Tech News for Friday, September 6th, 2024. In Los Angeles, I'm Tom Merritt. From Studio Animal House, I'm Sarah Lane. From somewhere in St. Louis, I'm Patrick Norton. And I'm um, the show's producer, Amos. Oh, Patrick, I'm so sad about Ted Drews Jr. Did, 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 yeah. did you ever get to make it to a Drews custard recently? My youngest is obsessed with Ted Drews. Um, I... I am afraid to actually look. I assume the organization is still operating, but I'm yeah, afraid. Yeah, no, to look it's it still up. rolling along for now. So, that, yeah. And he but, was junior. He wasn't even the founder. So, I'm sure. But he'll he be ran fine. it for decades. Forever. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's interesting. Like, like many cities and small towns, there are businesses that become a part of your life and they run forever and you expect they're going to run forever. And sometimes they don't. In this case, it is. And just, you know, if there's a place you love, go there this weekend. Yeah. Because, Just in case. You know, because in four years, you're going to be like, oh, I should have gone before they closed. Um, yep. So yep. maybe if you go, they won't close. And it'll be something you can share with or enjoy or do in the future. Anyway, fellow St. Yeah. Louisans, where did you go to high school? The rest of you, let's start with the quick hits. <laughs> Apple's next announcement comes Monday, September 9th. Bloomberg's Mark Gurman is one of the best in the no leakers, and he says we should expect four new iPhone 16 models, two new AirPods models, a thinner Apple Watch Series 10, and more about Apple intelligence. Join us in our Discord as we're taking notes and sharing our instant reactions live on Monday at 10 a.m. Pacific time. Also on Apple News, the company approved an update to WeChat in China. WeChat is the super app used for everything from paying in stores to ordering online to booking hotels, rides, shopping, kind of does it all. Apple has been holding up an update where it worked with Tencent to negotiate an agreement over how much of a cut that Apple should get from these in-game payments in WeChat's minigames. Telegram co-founder and CEO Pavel Durov made his first public comments since he was detained in France two weeks ago. Writing on Telegram, Durov said the arrest was misguided and suggested the French authorities should have approached the company with their complaints rather than arresting him. I think France probably says they did, but uh, he also said he promised to moderate more content on the platform. Durov is free right now on 5 million euros bail, but he has to report into a French police station twice a week until his trial. The charges, if you don't recall, include complicity to spread pornographic images of minors, among others. In related news, Telegram has removed text from its FAQ that said it did not process requests related to private chats. Telegram says it hasn't changed anything. It's just clarifying the FAQ so that you realize you can report incoming chats to moderators by using the block and report feature. Telegram also removed the people nearby feature because they said it had issues with bots and scammers. They replaced that one with businesses nearby. And Telegram disabled new media uploads for the Telegraph blogging tool. Reuters sources say that Qualcomm's considering buying the part of Intel's design business focused on PC clients. Intel's PC division has been in decline, and Intel is looking to cut costs. An Intel spokesperson told Reuters it has not been approached with a formal deal by Qualcomm, however. Ars Technica updated its system builder guide and noted that while it doesn't find new CPUs and GPUs to be a big upgrade this round, most of its builds are now cheaper than the last time they updated the guide because of the falling prices of the chips. The guide recommends maximum price for performance builds for a budget office desktop, a budget 1080p gaming PC, a mainstream 1440p to 4K gaming PC, and a price conscious workstation. They're holding off on doing in the God build, that's the money, no object build, uh, until Intel's Arrow Lake, AMD's Ryzen 9000X 3D, and whatever comes next from NVIDIA is released. 
In an interview with CNBC, Qualcomm CEO Cristiano Amon shared more about the company's mixed reality project with Samsung and Google. The project will, reportedly, involve smart glasses that can work as a companion device for smartphones. Amon praised the Ray-Ban Meta Glasses, which use the Snapdragon AR1 Gen 1 chip, and says this new project would combine local AI processing with cloud capabilities. Did you all happen to see this headline that watching the NFL this season is going to cost you at least $1,700 and, and up yeah, to $2,500? Okay, you... I guess I can't watch it then. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's what I would have thought. Uh, Marco Watch did some calculating behind this story that I find less than illuminating. It's not that anything they said was wrong. I just think it it doesn't give you a fair picture. Uh, they said it'll cost you $1,758 if you want to watch every NFL game in the U.S. live. Uh, if you use traditional cable, that number goes up to $2,494. Uh, so let's take a look at these. Uh, and remember, if you're keeping a service after the NFL season is over, you're likely using it for more than just watching the NFL. So the way Market Watch counted an entire year's worth of subscription as part of this, was, I was find to be less. Football. Yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if we're just like the cost of football, then let's just say, okay, only for those four months. Exactly. Um, it also appears they counted paying for a service to get broadcast channels and ESPN separate from getting NFL Sunday ticket, they the total of both of those combined came to one thousand two hundred ninety five bucks. So that's almost the entire bill right there. But you can get YouTube TV and NFL Sunday ticket combined for six hundred thirty five dollars and ninety six cents for the four months of the football season. So that seems a lot cheaper. If, again, if we're limiting it to the football season, and you might say, mm -hmm. you might say, well, I can get CBS, ABC, and Fox over the air for free, and then pay four hundred seventy nine dollars just for Sunday ticket. Uh, that would leave you without ESPN. You could get ESPN through Sling's Orange plan for forty dollars a month. So that'd be one hundred sixty dollars over the course of the season. That ends up being four dollars more <laughs> than just buying YouTube TV and Sunday tickets. Well, and a lot of the stuff. Okay, so I'm a 49er fan. So all 49er games, if I, you know, if I'm around, I mean, I'm not that big of a football fan, but if if I'm around. That's what I'm doing on a Sunday kind of thing. Um, I, I, I know where to find the game type thing. So, yeah. So the whole, like, buy every single NFL game for the entire season makes no sense to me because some of them are happening at the same time anyway. I'm just not that big of a fan. Right, so right. Th those people are kind of in one category. And then you have people like me who are like, yeah, but like if your team's really good, then they're going to be on the network games anyway. And you know, if you're you in have market, a different, yeah. right. Yeah. You, you, it's not, it, it, you have a different, um, different experience depending on where you are and and who you're rooting for yeah well but but let's continue down the road of those <laughs> of you who are like no i must have access to every single live nfl game all season long uh we we get you youtube tv and nfl sunday ticket for 635 dollars and 96 cents that leaves in the market watch estimate, four hundred sixty-three dollars left to pay to get the rest of the games that aren't available on those two services. That's Amazon Prime Video, Peacock, ESPN Plus, and Netflix. Market Watch also included paying fifty bucks for the entire year of NFL Plus to get the preseason games, which all happen in a month. So maybe not everybody needs to see all the preseason games, but let's hold that aside for the moment. Peacock is eight dollars a month and only has the Brazil game this weekend and a playoff game at the end of the year. So you're only going to need it for two games. That's $16. You subscribe right now. You watch this weekend's game. You unsubscribe. You come back at the end of the year for the playoffs. You get paid the $8. You unsubscribe. So that's $16, not $80. That makes sense, right? It, it, it makes sense. Although Peacock would love you to not oh, sure. unsubscribe yeah. afterwards. So, but you don't you know, have it, to. It's, and it's easy know, there, to. There may be some, you know, bait and switching stuff going on. There's yeah. not, though. I've actually done it. It's actually very little bait and switch. You go in, you uh -huh. unsubscribe. Uh, Netflix starts at $7 a month. They only have Christmas games. So you're only going to need it for a month. 
that's seven dollars if again if you have netflix anyway that's a different situation but if you're only wanting to get the games that's seven dollars espn plus is eleven dollars a month that's a little pricey but it only has one game in week seven so you don't need to pay 110 dollars for all year you just need to pay for that for one month Amazon Prime Video is available on its own for $15 a month. So if you don't have Amazon Prime, you're going to pay $60 if you want to see the Thursday night football games. But if you already have Amazon Prime shipping, that's $139 a year. Market Watch isn't wrong about that, but you probably were paying that anyway, right? If you just wanted the free mm -hmm. shipping. So, okay, let's pretend you don't want the free shipping. You're just paying just to get the games. It's 94 bucks. For the rest of these, not four hundred and sixty-three dollars. So, if you want every regular season game, by my calculations, that would be seven hundred twenty-nine dollars and ninety-six cents. That's not with the preseason games. So, if you want those preseason games through NFL Plus, which I mean they're already over, but just for the sake of of completion, you'd pay seven dollars for one month of NFL Plus. So that brings it to seven hundred thirty-six dollars and ninety-six cents. But honestly, a lot of the preseason is already going to be on broadcast or other channels. People may not be as excited to have every preseason game as they are the rest of the thing. But I don't know. I also think a lot of people already have Amazon Prime, so it's not an extra cost, right? Because they have it for the shipping or something else. A lot of people already have Netflix. That's not an extra cost. You can't count that if you'd have it anyway. Peacock and ESPN Plus, probably less likely for a lot of people to have, but they're either really cheap to add, $8 and $11 just for the one game, or you just go to a bar for, for that game if you really have to see it. Um, $479 is close to the max most people have to pay if they need everything. I will say, though, it was pretty complicated to track all this down. And it, would it was be complicated pretty compl just to hear this just right? now. And I know exactly what you're saying. It's like, if you want to watch a variety of games on a variety of, you know, when I say networks, I'm using <laughs> the biggest air quotes ever because it's sure. like, what's a network anymore? Um, it, it, you, you have to uh, hunt it down. And, you know, people who care about All sports you have are going to figure is... it out. But... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, right. Patrick, your eyes are watering. I, I I I had my mic muted, so you didn't hear my gigantic laughter when you were talking about the effort to take this down. Um, I am honestly the person that's really irritated by the band of live sports I don't want to watch on every single streaming platform right now. I have not been a sports ball guy for a while. Sarah, I am shocked and hurt that you actually refer to that team from Santa Clara as the glorious team from San Francisco. Um what you know are that you aside, about? the Santa Clara Nin Niner 49. Nation. Come on now, who's better than They're us? Dead to me. They're dead to me. They're dead to me. They moved to Santa okay. Clara. They're All dead right. to me. That said, you know, I am. I this is. It is. It is a freaking nightmare as a sports fan. And you know, I, I've been in situations where I wanted to watch a game, and I realized that the financial obligation. It was like, you know what? I'm taking the kids to the bar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> There's a bar. They got a big screen. The AC's better there anyway. Yeah, it's right. gonna be it's Shirley Temple's for everybody. Don't, by the way, call Child Protective <laughs> Services. I'm not dragging kids. To I'm the just bar. trying to avoid having to navigate the complicated situation of streaming well, these it, days. It's, it's one of those situations where, hey, you know what? Our fans are so dedicated. We can maximize revenue at their expense. And you know what? They'll do it, or they won't. I, okay. you know, I, I don't know if it's really a, like an evil plan of the NFL here. This is just how streaming is going overall. Okay, uh, I was, I was. It trying is a not little bit of that rat hole. It, it was a little bit. Yeah, of I mean, careful Amazon what you wish getting for. Thursday night football is not Amazon being like, <laughs> let's take it all down. Let's, They're like, well, let's get a piece of this. Yeah, I and mean, and and it's careful what you wish for. For decades, we've many of us have been saying, I just want to pay for the channels I want. This is what that looks like, unfortunately. You have to manage it. I mean, this is also, by, to to kind of swing back to something they said a couple minutes ago, this is kind of what's happening with all of street. All, you know, the streaming services are a mess right now, right? Like, I'm laughing because, oh, I decided to get, you know, the Hulu Disney Plus package, but now all the Hulu content is on Disney Plus and makes it harder to find the stuff I actually want to watch on Disney Plus. And it's it's the level of irritation, you know, the live sports integration. Like, I, I get that that 
you know, every streaming service is turning back into a major network from like 1986. Not super thrilled about that. Um, but I, I think as, as somebody who's been, who's had people, you know, if you're an Oakland fan and you have to pay to watch a game, you know, when you're already paying for MLB, I get why they do blackouts, but I, I don't know. I just, I just find it really frustrating when they make it really difficult to watch all of your team's games. Yeah. yeah. We, we've brought down the cost. That was clear from yeah. this, too. If you have cable, it's even more expensive, according to MarketWatch. Uh, and we gave you more control over over channels and, and services. Uh, it's just now we have to make it less complicated. Uh, I think that's the next thing. Well, that's Let's what move AI on to works. new form factors coming out of IFA this week, Sarah. What do we got? Uh, indeed. Um, and this was IFA and, and a variety of other places. We just got a lot of good form factor stuff, <laughs> depending on what form factor you're looking for. LG showed off a new stretchable display, in fact, a variety of them, during Seoul Fashion Week in South Korea for design for things that you would already be wearing, something that would go on a shirt or even a, a, a clutch bag that you might be carrying with you. The micro LED displays are built on silicon material, so similar to a contact lens, so they're very thin, very light, and can be stretched from 12 to 14 inches. Honor launched its foldable Magic V3, 9.2 millimeter thick, making it the thinnest foldable phone on the market outside of China. Uh, and it goes for 1,999 euros, but probably will not come to the United States. Honor also announced the Book Art 14 laptop, which has a removable webcam. It attaches uh, to the lid and pops in with some pogo pins, allowing the bezel to be only two millimeters thin. Uh, Honor's Magic Pad 2 tablet is also getting the company's defocused incorporated multiple segments or DIMS DIMS lenses directly into the screen. So DIMS lenses are supposed to slow down elongation in the eye for certain age groups and in <laughs> some cases can reverse or mitigate myopia and improve vision. Yeah, it's doing what they do with glasses, but building it into the screen. They did this with the magic, pa uh, the magic phone as well. And finally, at IFA, uh, this was one of the runaways in terms of buzz. Lenovo announced the Auto Twist AI PC concept with a motorized hinge that responds to voice commands. According to The Verge, it takes about 10 seconds to transform. It also does movement tracking, so the display can stay pointed at you as you move around. Now, this is just a concept at this point. No shipping date. Uh, Patrick, <laughs> which of these many different display form factors catch your eye and then follow it around? <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, I just want to give a shout out to LG because, you know, I, I get all DEF CON goofy excited about clothes with monitors in them that don't weigh 40 pounds and require a car battery. Go LG. Uh, but honestly, I mean, this is this is promising in that sense, right? Yeah. I mean, th think of all the obscene things you can put on a high school kid's sweatshirt or a high school kid can put on their yeah. sweatshirt no i actually mean that in a positive way it's kind of fun to see <laughs> something like that and the idea of a, a display that can stretch may sound silly but i can think of an even number of locations where that could be really fun to experiment with um but honestly the honors ai defocus stuff as somebody who you know started wearing glasses uh in their 40s the idea of not having to you know that moment where you're like i have my phone i cannot read it i have to find my glasses i've fallen out of the bed the cat has just scratched me because i landed on the cat why was the cat sleeping there i don't know where this are my glasses my, my you know. morning every morning <laughs> where are my glasses i so, can't see yeah, I, I now want to figure out where I can actually find an Honor phone so I can go look at that just to see if it, you know. Well, it's not going to make it you make it so you can read it without your glasses. It's a it's a therapeutic uh, thing that's that's scientifically proven to work in a particular age range, and I don't think we're in it unfortunately. But it helps. It basically tricks you your eye into thinking it's looking far in the distance, which helps can elongate the eye and combats myopia. Uh, and so you'd too. have to keep using it for a couple of weeks to see any kind of well, effect. I mean, I don't know if anybody in our, I mean, let's call us all in the general age rage. Myopia is an uh, issue I have right now, very much so, because I'm farsighted, but I spend all day looking at something closer to me. So this... I mean, I don't know if this is going to. I don't know issues. that. I don't know that scientifically right. they have found this helps in your age range. I think it works on younger folks. Yeah. Right. Well, I mean, but, so your your you know. eyeball kind of hardens over time. That's yeah, why. exactly. That's why. 
but but uh, but part of the point here though is my is eyeballs that, do anyway <laughs> well it's 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 kind of like loss of high you know your treble hearing it's just it's part of being human but the idea that if they can do this in a way that fewer people staring at monitors accelerates the onset right yep. so you can do things that you're not looking down. away yeah, it's yeah. like headphones that max out at 85 dB, which will probably max out at 80 dB in the future. It is helping you to do less damage to your body while you're young. And, using and supposedly it's just changing color focus, and so you don't really notice it uh, when you're looking at yeah. it. Uh, but I'd like to see it in person, too, to, to see if you do notice it. Yeah. But I mean, but Patrick, what about the, what about the uh, auto twist AI PC? I love Lenovo when they do stuff like this. And I will also point out that I've seen a number of projects like this actually ship, like go from being like, we made an exotic and wondrous thing to, oh my God, you can buy it. Um, so I, I am actually, as somebody who's super frustrated because they have a camera and a monitor and I spend a lot of time in Teams meetings, the idea of having like, you know, it be able to track me is actually really compelling. Um, you know, because I still refuse to do what I really need to do, which is to take a monitor, drill a hole in the middle of it, put a camera behind there and then talk to people like this, you know. So I, I, I actually I dig the idea. Yeah. I'm excited. <laughs> well, folks, if you want to hear us talk about a particular exciting development that you've seen, submit it on our subreddit. You can submit stories and vote on them at dailytechnewsshow.reddit.com. Back in May, Sonos released a redesigned controller app for the iPhone and Android. However, that removed a number of features like the alarm and sleep timer, leading to complaints from all the users. Well, most of them anyway. Late last month, Sonos released an update to the app, restoring some of the functionality. Uh, Pat, you've been following this story. Give us the quick update for those of us who are or those in the audience who haven't been keeping up. And then let's talk about some alternatives if you don't want to rely on the Sonos anymore. Oh, my goodness. So much drama, and it's really legit. Um, Sonos is some of the most, most – I mean, look, I own a ton of Sonos products. Sarah owns a, a ton of Sonos products. I'm pretty sure Tom owns some Sonos products. I um, do. You know, and we love them because they work and they do what they do, and they did it long before streaming audio existed, right? Um, this was honestly an unforced error. Sonos pushed this software out for the launch of the Ace headphones and the Move 2, and suddenly, you know, if you look at the Sonos app page, it's like your key to the ultimate listening experience. Uh, the app had massive issues. If it wasn't for some eagle-eyed beta testers, they would have lost a lot of their adaptability or all of their adaptability. Um, a lot of features that that their, their user base rely on just just disappeared boom it wasn't like there was a slow transition it was wham if you're going to run sonos you you know you're going to have to do this update um so i mean the wire cutter for example has actually pulled the recommendation i think it's dennis mm -hmm. berger wrote this uh quote after careful consideration we no longer recommend the sonos multi-room audio platform as the best overall choice if you're listening at 1.5x i probably sound like a chipmunk on helium uh sonos recently rolled out a major update to the control app that had a ton of problems leaving its customers with a much less intuitive experience while the company is slowly addressing some of the major issues with the new app, this is not the first time Sonos has hurt customer trust through poorly executed changes. Yeah, yeah. The president of Sonos apologized, and they were so aware of the issues that they had created. They actually put, you know, the app actually was like, hey, here's a link to an apology. Um, <laughs> I don't think I've ever really experienced something quite like that. No, it, yeah. it was it was it was bad. It was bad yeah. for for those outside the Sonos, you know, universe. Uh, the company was basically saying, "We are so sorry that we upgraded your experience. It was <laughs> obviously a very very bad idea, and yeah. we are going to try to make your experience better." And everyone was like, "Just roll it back to the previous experience." I yeah. mean. <laughs> they will. This is one of those things that they will teach in in PR, in like communication schools, and in, in PR classes, or in PR firms, where it's going to be like, all right, let's let's do some gaming on a scenario here, and they will talk about this, and it's like, okay, like a case study, yeah, yeah, you're we're going to do a big ask me anything kind of, you know, it's it's you know, the response has been kind of tragic, you know. Okay, like, so. That's that's the recap. <laughs> that's the previously on. Uh, this is what they, I talk about instead of football. No, no, um, it's fine. And they 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 did say they considered bringing back the old app, but they couldn't for technological reasons. Right. Uh, so 
if you're just What's, done and you don't want to wait around for this to get fixed, what alternatives do people have? Okay, first of all, here's the thought. If you stream using Spotify Connect or AirPlay or Bluetooth, you might not have really noticed, right? Because this is a very app-centering experience thing for a lot of people. The Sonos hardware is really good. Um, Google Nest, I think, is, is wire cutters, you know, less expensive choice. Doesn't sound as good, but it works really well. Um, you know, Echo is just, you know, it's emotionally frustrating. It's just difficult to use, right? Um, and honestly, there's a reason why whole house streaming audio efforts from major consumer electronics manufacturers have just never taken off. And literally almost everyone has done a Sonos competitor because they want to share that market. They either have software that was never very good and is barely supported, or they lack support directly from the streaming services. Um, so first of all, if you own a bunch of, if you have an investment in Sonos for right now, try to ride it out, especially if you're streaming audio, see if Sonos sorts it. Um, if your issue is that you have a large collection of streaming, you know, if you have thousands of MP3s or, you know, or, or, or uh, FLAC files on a local service, take a look at uh, Rune or rune.apps, the website. Uh, it costs money, but it's amazing. Um, if you're an audio geek and you want to get old school with boxy speakers, uh, take a look at what the company Weem is doing. You can find their products up on Amazon or their websites, um, W-I-I-M-H-O-M-E.com. Um, they're doing some, they're just one delivering incredible performance for uh, really reasonable costs. Like for under $300, you get essentially a little tiny integrated amplifier. It's like 120 watts into four ohms. Hmm. Uh, you know, it'll work with Spotify, iHeartRadio, Tidal, Amazon Music, Cobuzz, Napster, Pandora, TuneIn, Deezer. I'm pretty sure I can stream to it from Rune. Um, and you get a pair of speakers and you set up like, hey, it's 1986, but I've got streaming audio and a vastly better performing amplifier. Plus, I've got streaming audio, right? Um, you know, when you're looking at this... Um, man, this is, you know, this is this is a killed by Google you know, <laughs> kind of, of level of frustration that our people are dealing with here. Um, you know, honestly, though, if you're invested in Sonos, I would say ride it out, see if they pull the app together. I know that's not probably what a lot of people want to hear. You know, mm -hmm. there's a there's a dedicated iPhone app that you can try that I, I haven't tested yet, so I'm not going to name it. If it works, I'll let everybody know, and Tom can tell you that. Uh, there's no sort of equivalent to that app. Uh, for Android, and you still will need the Sonos app to do any of the configuration and updates and stuff. But, you know, uh, I, as somebody who's looked at, you know, there's Blue Sound, which is high quality, but I think their app's never been particularly good. Um, again, every consumer, like, you know, it's Sonos has so much loyalty and has had so much success because their stuff works. It does a good job, and the yeah. app really tied it together in a way. I mean, my I speakers are, I mean, I, I'm, I'm a Sonos faithful for sure. At the same time, I don't even really use Sonos software unless I have to. See, and it's not even really because I have a huge problem with it. It's because I have other options. Right. Yeah. The more options I have, the better. And honestly, you know, if you're a Spotify, if you if you primarily consume music through Spotify and use the Spotify app, you're probably like, oh, there's a problem with the yeah. Sonos app. And, and that's actually not a bad place to be. Um, if you are right. a dedicated yeah. Sonos user and you used all those little features in the app, you are probably frothing with rage. I, I, I was frothing with rage until they, I can't use that phrase on a family friendly show like this. I was frothing with rage uh, until about three, uh, two, I don't know. It was, I just remember it was about a month and a half and they finally fixed enough things so uh, that it uh -huh. wasn't like, this super frustrating experience just to set up the audio books that my son likes. To Were you to. trying to say they unfutzed things? Unfracked. Unfracked. Uh, yeah. Something like yeah. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something Unfurled. Like that. Unfurled. <laughs> A new solution. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I also will, will laugh, like just, just to, in, you know, Tom's going to shut me down in a second, as well he should. They actually have a Trello you could access to see what the current software oh, development right. plan is, right? Have you ever heard of a, you know what I mean? It's, no, <laughs> never. <laughs> if you have, tweet at PatrickNorton.com. Yeah. Or me, at Patrick Norton on, on Twitter, because I want to read up about it. Because this yeah. is. Yeah, how many Trello uh, boards have been public? published many, uh, publicly yeah yeah how many major companies in a yeah this is this is kind of wild so 
you know, there are alternatives. Like, honestly, the blue sound stuff uh, sounds fantastic, but it's expensive enough that it actually makes, in some cases, and it makes Sonos seem approachable. You know, if you're more DIY, I will say the stuff Weem is doing, I would love to see Weem do a standalone, uh, you know, Wi-Fi speaker system because the engineering they're doing on these boxes that either connect your streaming audio to your existing old school stereo system or the, the Weem app, which has the built-in amplifier, like, these are pretty fantastic. Like the, the, the quality you're getting for the price is something that just didn't exist a few years ago. So I'm excited about that. Well, That's thank you, Patrick, uh, for joining us. If folks want to find out more of what you got going on these days, where should they go? Uh, you know, I, I am, uh, I believe I'm Patrick Norton on blue sky and Patrick Norton on threads. I have to check that. Uh, obviously I'm not spending as much time on threads as I should. I'm still Patrick Norton on Twitter and, uh, AV Excel is in the process of relaunching and hopefully will be up and running in the immediate it, future. If all of these frustrations make you just want to disconnect, uh, then we have a top five for you. Our top five this week <laughs> is five ways to disconnect. You can watch it at Daily Tech News Show on TikTok, DTNS Picks on Instagram, and of course, YouTube.com slash Daily Tech News Show. Patrons, stick around. The extended show is about to start. Good day, Internet. Time again for the great debates. Digital music is the death of... Or is it the renaissance of music listening? Uh, would you pay to see a virtual artist in concert? Does social media influence what you eat? We will debate all that and more. Stick around. Do you not want to miss that? But just a reminder, you can catch our show live Monday through Friday at 4 p.m. Eastern. That's 2000 UTC. And you can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We hope you all have a real good weekend. We're back on Monday covering Apple's It's Glow Time event with Nika Monford and Terrence Gaines. Talk to you then. This week's episodes of Daily Tech News Show were created by the following people. Host, producer, and writer Tom Merritt. Host, producer, and writer Sarah Lane. Executive producer and booker Roger Chang. Producer, writer, and co-host Rob Dunwood. Video producer Joe Kuntz. Producer at large Anthony Lemos. Spanish language host, writer, and producer Dan Campos. Science correspondent Dr. Nikki Ackermans. Social media producer and moderator Zoe Detterding. Our mods! Beatmaster W. Scottis One. BioCow. Captain Kipper. Steve Godorama. Paul Reese. Matthew J. Stevens, a.k.a. Gadget Virtuoso and JD Galloway. Modern video hosting by Dan Christensen. Music and art provided by Martin Bell, Dan Luters, Mustafa A, Acast, and Len Peralta. Acast ad support from Tatiana Matias. Patreon support from Tom McNeil. Contributors for this week's shows included Scott Johnson, Ron Richards, and Patrick Norton. Our guest this week was Jen Briney. And thanks to all the patrons who make the show possible. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs> <laughs>